Alrighty, everybody, we are back. Um, this class right now is the Making ISK, or Making Money class. And this is going to focus on various ways to make money, or ISK, I should say, inside of EVE, and more importantly, how to do it in Brave Space, because you can make a lot more money down here in NullSec and in Brave Space, where it's safer, than you ever could in HiSec. Alrighty, uh, as it is right now, I'm outside Fortress Impasse, so if you want to undock, and I'm going to take you all the way around PZMA and show you the various ways in which we can make money. And then the latter part, I will show you some ways in which uh, will only be viewable on your screen and on YouTube, uh, in which you can also make money. So everybody just start undocking and uh, make sure that you have Warp Fleet enabled. Uh, while we're doing this, I'm going to make sure that nobody's left out and that we all have everything set up various ways so that you have either making money via the Omega mo clone or the Alpha clone models. There's really only two differences, and the difference is that PI, planetary interaction, uh, is not possible in an alpha clone and planetary interaction is a very light way of making money with planets and if you don't have a mega status or a mega clone then you can't do it uh, we'll be going over that but for the other things we're doing like mining and riding anybody can do it super simple super fun lots of uh, joy to be had so alrighty uh, everyone undocked hopefully hopefully undocked and what we're going to do is, I'm going to show you a neat little thing. Now I did talk about uh, the scanners and how I don't know much about dscan. Uh, what we're going to look at is go over to your scanners and click on Pro Scanner. Now I don't actually have a Pro Scanner, I bet you guys don't either, but that's fine. What we do need to do is focus on the sites which have already been found and are shared and to look at them. Now, in this tutorial, we will not be going to a combat site simply because we will not be going to a combat site. Um, I barely have a ship that's good enough for that combat site that we have in here, and I'm not risking anyone dying. So we'll talk about combat sites, but we don't have to go too far into it. First, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the ore sites. An ore site is a place that you... Uh, go to when you're mining in system. You could go to an asteroid belt, but they have NPCs, hostile NPCs, that spawn there all the time. Nobody likes going to a, a asteroid belt, getting attacked, having to get your ratting ship, go out there, get rid of it, and then come back with your ore mining ship, and then the rats are bad, back again. This way is so much simpler. So open up your probe scanner, click on the tab that says group, and I just click it twice so that ore site comes up. Um, really so far in this area, there's just an ore site and a combat site. You may see, I think it was a wormhole may come up otherwise, but for our intense purposes, we're just going to go to ore site and combat site. Now what you want to do is you go from the largest to the smallest for the ore sites. And they have a turnover of, I think the enormous is five hours whereas small has only a couple hours and they produce some of the best and most valuable uh, ore that you can use. Uh, so follow me here and I'm going to warp us off here to the enormous site. So hold on one sec. <laughs> now uh, you may get a little window that pops up such as I do because I am, I'm such a fun guy. Everybody's jumping right ahead of me. Um, <laughs> and it says, Asteroid belts arise from accumulation of dust particles, blah, 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 blah. It, it's just a nice way of saying this is an instance that the server created. It's full of a lot of valuable asteroids. The only thing that you have to be careful about is make sure you're in the standing fleet. Make sure you tell on Mumble that you're coming over there. You know, just give them a heads up. Um, and if you do so then you'll have no problems. And we're warping out here. We're going to go back to uh, Jove. Because they were in here. 
and there are people that are bad. That was a work call. Uh, I thought that was clear. They weren't. <laughs> well, we do have NPCs in here sometimes, so we're going to go warp out. So you saw that real quick. Apparently they were working on the medium site. That's my bad. This is why you talk to them. This is why you talk to them. Um, uh, there are hostile NPCs. I thought there weren't. Well, I was misinformed. Uh, there are hostile NPCs every so often. Um, we're going to edit that out. We won't really edit it out, but I wish we would. Um, and the main thing about those sites is that they have rock rolls. A rock roll is the highest level of ore mining ship there. And while... Uh, Dang it, I docked. Uh, while you don't need a roll call, the thing is about having a roll call is you can compress ore. And compressing ore makes it, I believe, 100 times smaller or 10 times smaller than what you had before. Uh, compressed ore is easy to travel around with. It's easy to move. It's more valuable. I mean, it's like, hey, you can have a thousand pounds, a thousand dollars of coal, or you can have a thousand dollars of a diamond. Uh, a diamond is super easy to move around, whereas that coal is, well, you're going to need a train. Um, <laughs> they told me they were there. Uh, so, hold on, we're going to try to warp to another area and hopefully see the roll in action. I'm going to warp ahead so that you guys don't get there. Yeah, I will not neglect the exploration they just make. Yes, because we love wormholes. We do love wormholes. Uh, while I'm working there, I will talk about that. Um, that will be one of the last ones. Um, just so you know, here's the thing that you want to do about when you do go to these uh, mining areas. And I'm going to show it off on the map. Uh, three things are important. These little areas have the most expensive, that is the most profitable ore there. Uh, they do have Mercox, Mercoxic, I believe that's it. Um, you have to have a special mining laser. Uh, the wonderful thing about that, oh look, okay. Uh, and we can see them. They do have the oracles up. Okay, hold on a sec. Sorry? Are you going to warp us there? Yeah, I'm going to warp you guys there. Um, hold on a sec. Do, 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 do. Yeah, learning about fleets is my learning of today. That's my little thing. Um, I'm going to let you guys watch there. There are Rorquals there. Uh, I'm going further into this wall, I'll have you guys warp there. Uh, there we go. Rorquals are really great. As you get into the standing fleet, you tell them, hey, are there any Rorquals out? Where are you guys at? When you find them, uh, make sure you're in the standing fleet and what you can do is they will be the head of that fleet and the worry thing is is that you can use their hanger in there and that hanger that you click on that obviously I can't use because we're in our own fleet alrighty there we go uh, that hanger lets you compress ore when you can compress ore you save all that space and you don't have to keep jumping back and forth between station and the field which can add up to a lot of minutes uh, to put it this way uh, if I use one of my mining barges I can make easily uh, 10 15 million ish whereas if I didn't have that roll constantly compressing my ore I would be making somewhere on the lines of five million is because I would be wasting time jumping in, jumping out, so on and so forth. Plus, as a group, you can always call for reinforcements and say, hey, there's these NPC spawn, you can help us out. So it's good to be mining in a group. Plus, you get to talk to each other down in uh, the chat. So that's a wonderful thing there. 
The one thing to be mindful is always be kind to the Rorqual pilot and be mindful of who they are. Say, hey, can I use your storage, your hangar there so I can compress some more? You just ask them over chat or you just send them a message. Make sure you're polite and kind. They'll be polite and kind back to you. Remember, Brave is all about being classy and staying classy. So just stick with that. And you can look around and see all the valuable, priceless, already mined ore. <laughs> there we go. There's a rock. Um, and this is what it's used for. It doesn't matter if you're just an adventurer. It doesn't matter if you're in a mining barge or you have your own Oracle. Uh, it's all about working together, depleting them, working them out towards the next one. And that's it. So it's a nice little pretty little place here. Any questions about this? So there are real people uh, mining right now? There will be people all the time mining, especially uh, in here. There's people always mining in impasse and you always want to be where Rorqual is at because they can compress ore and by compressing ore, you only have to do so many trips back to the station to dump it off because your, your cargo is going to get full no matter what. Even if you have the beefiest one, they always fill up. Uh, but you have unlimited sta storage on the station, plus you can sell it from there or reprocess it. Um, the thing is to just remember, go to these sites or go to the mumble chat, ask them where they're at, if they're nice, find where they're at, go to the ore sites and mine together and ask the local site uh, pilot if you can compress off of them. Make sure that it's the one thing that I will say that is the caveat to this is you have to take turns and someone will dump their ore in, they'll compress it, then they'll pull it out. And then it's whoever's next. So I myself, the for instance, he's mining Spodite or whatever it's called, Spudbanite. I'll mine something next to it that says Croxite, and that way we don't get confused. And we just, you know, keep saying like, I'm gonna, you know, compress off of you now. And like, all right, you can press off me now, and you don't get uh, confused about whose ore it is and who's compressing that and that. Uh, that's the best thing there. It saves you money, saves you time. It's just great. Uh, any other questions? So those players are actually right now online. Yeah, they're well, <laughs> their clients are online. Uh, whether or not they're somewhere else, uh, that's another thing. But generally, they're there. They are indeed online and playing. Uh, that's why they're in the standing fleet is because they'll have their Intel pages going, and I'm sure they've got that Intel web page going on full blast. That if someone pops into just this system it will blare an alarm. And that is because a Rorqual, uh takes, I believe, like at least a minute to jump away. And that's, I think, even if they're not deployed. And that makes them very, very, very good at targets because they are always the targets of PVP players. Even in pass, as safe as we are, it's still a very dangerous place for them. Whereas at my mining barge, someone pops in, I got 24 seconds to pop down if they're coming at me in an interceptor or an atron or somewhere else and I just notice them and they've popped down for four seconds and they got lucky with their d-scan and they know I'm on that site and they're already there within 10 seconds and they've got me tackled that's something to worry about but if we're a group we have a better chance we're stuck together we can say over mumble hey someone's coming to this place they're attacking us it's like oh how much health do you have left so and so much health you're as a group you're safer you're more profitable and that's why you want to mine together uh it's just a better idea and for visuals i'm going to click on this uh any other questions do 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 and i'm just making it pretty for the video okay on to the next one uh ratty uh, I'm going to warp into uh, an area and I'm going to line up, uh, which is uh, hopefully there's an NPC there uh, that will be mean to me and I'm going to target them first. Uh, what you want to do is click on the mine tab, find one of the asteroid belts, there's only three in here. Uh, and if you want to jump together, uh, I'm going to click on PZMA E, TAC E3, asteroid belt 1. Click line to so that we're all facing the same direction. I 
and then you warp to it. Uh, and I forgot to do warp to inflate because I'm a loser. Um, so bad. Oh goodness. I'm going to jump in first, mostly to make sure that the, whatever NPCs, if there are one, they target me. Um, ratting is a wonderful tradition. What you do is you go to these asteroid belts where there is, hopefully, a hostile NPC. Not in this one, apparently. Alrighty. After you get that hostile NPC, what you do, and what seems to be drones, or not drones, uh, drones is actually what I was supposed to say, but what seems to be Brave's policy and for a lot of other corporations' policy, which is have a drone boat. Have a, a ship that is outfitted with drones. You hit it with a little bit of damage from your main batteries, but you hit it with more damage from your drones. Uh, we're going to warp again. Where to? Uh, four asteroid belt one, and I click the. Uh, <laughs> I remember this time to click the button uh, to warp us there. And, and I'm the biggest ship, and I'm going to select them and fight them first if they do pop up there. If they do fight you too much, you can just always jump away or just move away if you're a small enough ship. These I've found the the minimum you're going to make once you have a pretty good ship is I'd say about five million. Isk an hour, and that's really the lowest end of it. They are just not here. This is killing me. Oh my gosh. Alright, we'll try one more. Uh, and what they do is they will have a bounty. Ratting is very important, and I was writing about this earlier. Ratting is very important, and it is one of two ways in which money is given from the game. It's the only way in which money straight up isk is introduced to the game. Uh, there are others. And before that. I was going to say there's more, but I'm, I said it's a few others, but it's one of the few ways. Uh, it's that and missions and a couple other things. Ooh, okay. Hopefully we'll warp there and hopefully there'll be something there. Um, the thing to know about that is, is that that actually brings in money. When you trade, and especially you buy and sell stuff on stations and NPC control stations, you lose money. This has something to do with player economies and all sorts of fun little things that I don't want to get into. But you are literally bringing money into the game. You are printing your own cash. Uh, funnily enough, there's actually a fee. Oh, good. There's something here that we can attack. Uh, there's a fee that is consistent from when you get your bounty. I don't, I don't know why, but that's how they do it. Now I'm going to attack them. These are pretty small. Let's see here. 22 is, 22,000 is, Uh, something to know about ratting. First, you want to red box them. That means you attack them so they don't attack your drones. Then you launch your drones. If you guys don't want to stick around for the battle, that's fine. Once the drones attack and start targeting something, they are quicker, they're faster, and they do more damage generally. Um, they're great for taking on all sorts of ships, um, and it's a quick way to make money. Uh, I'm going to attack these guys because I have something else to show you. What's also great is if once you destroy something, you want to put down what's called a mobile tractor unit, or an MTU. I just launched one. Uh, they're great in the fact that they make you money. Launch what mobile what's it again? I just launched it. It's called a mobile tractor unit. This is a cute little item. Cute little item. Uh, this is a wonderful item in the fact that it brings all of the wreckage and everything that's in the wreckage to it within, I think it's about 100 kilometers. You can find it on the page there. Uh, but it brings it to the wreckage so that once I shoot everything, it's going to take all the equipment off of there so I don't have to go from wreckage to wreckage to wreckage to wreckage. Oh, 
Oh no, don't die, Berserker. Um, oh my gosh, he barely survived. Yeah, and he was attacking my drone. Uh, that's something else to be careful about is your drones will get attacked and get and they'll get blown to pieces and they cost money. Uh, the mobile tractor unit is if you can see so it. So where you get this uh, mobile tractor unit? Uh, either GE Sota Factory or you can do PZMA Impasse here. These are the two main markets and they've got all the gear there. It costs like 8 million ISK for the basic one and many more for the compact one. And what it does is, you'll see it, it's pulling in the wreckage and it's literally tractoring it in closer, collecting it, and all of it's there so I don't have to worry about it. And then you just don't even pick it up your MTU? Yeah, I just go over to the MTU and I just say, oh hey, what's in here? What do I want? And I actually don't have to take everything. So if I empty it up, I'm going to open it up here. I open up just regular cargo and I can just say, oh, this is worth this much and this is worth this much. This right here, I don't know if you guys can access it or not. Yeah, 93k is. Yeah, that's not much. But I'll take it anyways because I'm like, hey, why not? Uh, the wonderful thing also about rats uh, is that, that you do get real equipment. Some of it's not that good. Uh, <laughs> And some of it can be crazy good. I actually got, I think it was uh, an angel or a halo level implant one time, and I didn't need it because it doesn't make my skill set. But it sold for, I believe, 20 million esk or something like that. I forgot, but it was crazy, crazy good find. It was more, th more than a couple hours of riding that I had done before and all the loot. So that's the wonderful thing. It saves you time on having to go to each wreck uh, it makes it easier for you so that you just have this one little space here, this little depot here, this unit. You circle around it if you want to. You attack people, the NPCs. They die. It tractors it in, takes all the loot up, and then you just move it to your own bay, and then you scoop it up. So I'm going to do this for the video here. Where I take everything up here. Do, 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 do. And then I'm going to scoop up the mobile tractor unit. It's particularly good um, if you're in a group two and one of your group has a really big cargo bay or if you just want to keep it around. Uh, thanks for the bump. Uh, so that you can collect everything. Another thing to do, uh, and that's ratting real quick. Do you have any more questions about ratting? Go around, shoot stuff, collect the loot. That's about it. Any other questions? And those normally can be found around the yeah, you can find them in asteroid belts, and if you go back to the probe scanner page again, there are uh, combat sites. Um, those are for much bigger ships or for a group. Uh, I think you can do it with a group. Um, and they come in waves, so you'll have three of the ships that we just saw just now. And then you can have 12, and then you can have uh, 5, and then you can have 8 really big ships. And that's something that you need to be aware of. Um, it's the two ways in which you just go to Astrid Belts of those combat sites, you find them, you blow stuff up, you get the loot, you get the bounties, and you make money. Um, oh, and you have to wait every 20 minutes because they pay out once every 20 minutes. I think it's on, 20 minutes on the dot, if I remember correctly, uh, the bounty. And so that's the way you make is. that's the way you can get items. And it's generally thought of as just a nice fun activity. And you can also practice your combat skills on an NPC who may blow up your ship, but he won't pod you. So if you have any implants, you at least keep those. Anything else? Say again about this 20 minutes. You should not do it more often than every 20 minutes, you said. Combat sites, you said? Uh, they respawn in 20 minutes. So if there are multiple, you can do multiple, but uh, you may have to need even till one respawn. Yeah. Respawn times. Oh, no, no, that's not the spawn time. Spawn times are some arbitrary number that I don't even keep track of. Um, if you go to the wallet page, you can see a wallet here. Uh, go to transactions. I don't have any transactions yet. Um, you, I just destroyed a bunch of those ships, and we're all going to get, probably because we're in the same fleet, a piece of that income. Oh, we actually have more. The guys came back.
Yeah, see, they came back, and that's not even the 20-minute timer. They just came back. And we can go target those guys. And I do is I target them, and I red box them, and that makes it so that when they choose to attack me, They'll choose me over my drones, and I have four gun batteries, and so I can select each of those, and even though I know my guns won't hit, uh, they won't target my drones, and that's the important thing. Alrighty. Alrighty, um, and again, uh, this is great is, is that these guys come in. These are pretty low. I'll usually get a general or somebody, and he pays 650k. Um, but these guys are fine in their own way. Um, and I just blow them up. And they've actually got me a uh, warp block on me, so I can't target them. Oh no, they're warping out. That's nice. A little scared. Um, okay. Uh, again, I launched my MTU. I should have launched it earlier. It's going to scoop up any of the wrecks, and you can watch it. Um, and this is just a super simple way to get money. You shoot at stuff, you loot it, you get money. Uh, and items. Uh, any other questions? So if your MTU is dragging this thing down, I cannot build it anymore? I mean, you could, you can try, but it's, it moves it pretty fast. It moves yeah. it, yeah, it's, it's faster than my ship can go by a lot. Uh, you can watch it as it moves stuff over, but it moves it, it loots it, and everything's inside there. Uh, another great thing about these is I'm going to return my drones, my fighter drones, I should say. Or, well, they're not fighter drones, but combat drones. Da, 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 da. And now I can launch my savage drones. And my salvage drones are really good is because even if you get crap loot like I got today, the salvage which takes up almost no space, but can be worth a lot. So for instance, uh, click on, if you've got the, your setup set up, like I'm the miscellaneous tab, and you'll see wreck, 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 and you just click on it and target them. Once you have those targeted, you can use your own, and this is the talking about the next part, savager, salvager, and you can start savaging uh, the wrecks that you had here, and that's what I do. And what savaging does is it creates an item which is very small. I think it's the same as uh, metal savage. Um, they're very small, but they can be worth, gosh knows how much money, like a couple uh, thousand isk or more. And that's a neat way is, is that you don't have to pick up an item which takes up most of your tractor bay. Uh, most of your cargo bay, but it's still worth quite the pretty penny. Salvaging is also an integral part of PvP, is that because after you have a big fight, let's say there was a big fight in GE, uh, 30 goon swarm came down, they, they totally wrecked the place, they did a lot of the horrible stuff, blah blah blah. There's all these player wreckage now, and what's great about it is I can just if I'm part of the fleet, I'll say to him, oh, I'm going to go salvage all this stuff and collect it in, let's say, a big industrial ship. And I'll make quite a bit of money doing it that way is because I'll only fill up, you know, five cubic centimeters, or not cubic centimeters, but five, yeah, cubic meters of so-and-so, and I'll make a boatload of money. And then I can split it with the fleet that I'm in. Uh, what I've done before is I've had a guy, 
and he did not have a good ship. He was still training to fly even the most basic ship, but he could salvage. And the one thing about salvaging is it can make you a lot of money super quick. So I'm going to open up my inventory here. Alrighty. And just on some of the stuff, this malfunctioning or destroyed items, it is 0, 0.0. Uh, space, yeah, it doesn't even take up any space, but it's a thousand isk, and another one's thirteen thousand isk, uh, and I've had stuff that's gone up to incredibly large amounts of money, uh, and that gets into the exploration part, which we'll talk about. So destroyed items like that, and that salvaging is a nice way of getting a lot of money with no space and they will use it into the manufacturing and invention and that side of it so people will buy it and you can sell it through the buyback program or you can sell it just through a station and just pay the taxes on it it's up to you so that's salvaging you can do it with pvp you can do it with another player who's ratting they may be doing a combat site and have gone through there and destroyed it, this thing and there's so many things there I've done that with a guy who just, they, they were just sitting on a combat site and they just kept running it over and over and over and over. And sure enough, we had a bunch of stuff there. So you need to have a special miner or some special device to do a salvaging? Uh, for salvaging, you can just have, if you're just a dedicated salvager, you just have a salvager and it's a, a, a high energy unit, high energy slot. Um, and that's just a great thing to use right there. You don't need the salvage drones like I do, but it's really good if you do, is because what I will do is I will select five or six, because I can select now, I can select six targets. I will select one with my salvager unit that I have in my one slot, and each drone goes to a different target, and they'll try to harvest it, and once they do, they'll return to me. Then I'll select something else and start salvaging the next one. And doing that alone, just on salvaging sites, I make easily 15 to 20 million isk an hour. Uh, it's very work intense. Unlike the miners, I can't just go and watch YouTube and have this on another screen. I, I'm, I'm clicking and clicking and clicking and clicking and clicking and clicking. But it's not direct combat, so I don't have to worry about much stuff. There's usually the other guy who's around or, you know, in standing fleet I can be in so they, somebody can warn me and save me if need be. Um, and it's just another way to make money. This is just, you know, somebody's got to go pick up the trash, be the space janitor as it's been called. Any questions about it? I'll take that as a no. Uh, I'm going to talk about PI. Uh, and we're actually going to warp to the planet so that you guys can have fun with this. So, hold on one second. I'm going to set it up for you guys. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Alrighty, I'm warping us to a planet and a customs office. PI, Planetary Interaction. Pretty sure that's what it stands for. Yeah, sure, why not? PI <laughs> is a wonderful way of making items, well, actually resources, and a wonderful way of making ISK. I have PI set up with three alts, and I average about 40 million ISK a day for about 20 minutes worth of effort. So that's 20 million ISK an hour. Um, and the wonderful thing is it makes units and it makes products that are pretty much reserved, or at least that I make, for the player-owned structures. So if our player-owned structure gets blown up, hey, we can make a new one super quick. Or uh, if we need to expand and build a new player-owned structure over here, hey, we've got the resources. They're always selling, they're always in demand, and uh, it's just a nice laid-back way of making money. It's, I'll put it this way, whereas mining can watch YouTube with planetary interaction, you just have to undock, uh, send stuff up to the customs office, which is next to us, um, store it there, collect it maybe like once a week or so, and then sell it off at once a week. And you've got yourself some nice um, disc. It's all up to you how far involved you get with it. I'm pretty involved with it because I like the way it is and just making money and 
it kind of helps out the alliance if you want to you know donate some or sell it at a pretty low cut price um, and it's just I pop up log in click over my planetary interaction map and I get my resources set up everything have it set to cycle again and the laziest I can do is 15 minutes every day and I don't have to do everything for about three more days oh and you guys should have got your money uh, do you guys get your bounty now Well, okay, maybe not. Uh, what I want you to do now is click onto the Warp Out button. Not actually Warp Out, but click onto the uh, planet and click over to View Planetary Production. Now, what it will say is on Build, yeah, Bounty Receive. Yeah, and that's how you do it. That's how you make money. You'll, you'll notice something that's just very funny. Under Bounty Prizes, they also tax you, which is about 10%. Why CCP decided to install something like a tax, I don't know. I really don't. But um, there it is. Why, why they would need to make two different interactions, I don't know, but that's how it is. So you got your money there. And you can go over it, and it'll say what you killed and what you got the bounty prizes for. So I got one seizure, three treasures, one legatus, and one trebini. And I got 117k. And we get it more. We get it spread out because there was a couple of us. Whereas if it was just me, I'd probably get more. But it's kind of potato potato. You want to work in a group and take out more enemies quicker, faster, get the salvage items, sell that out, or do you want to do it all by yourself? It's all about how you treat it. Okay, so go over to PZMA, go to the planetary production, look at the map. And it is a very nice map. You just look and sprawl around there. Go over to scan. And you will have a little sliding bar. And it will say all the different materials and resources. And they'll say there's 39% of noble gas, metals on this planet, or 66% of microorganisms. And all about planetary productions is, and I'm going to show you this on the map, is you're going to extract extract material from the planet, process it, or not process it, really no one not, doesn't process it, and then send it up to the player-owned custom office, the POCO, take it to a station, and sell it to somebody, or you know, put it on market. So click on, let's say, base metals. Uh, what you can do to view the little scanner area here is change how much it's uh, looking at. So for instance, you've got two little triangles on either side. If you expand them all the way out, then it will say show you the concentrations for everywhere in the map. And that's kind of good, I guess, in some ways for showing you exactly where stuff is and where it's a high concentration. And you do have to move the map around. So we selected base metals, and there's pretty good spots here at the top towards the north pole of this planet. And it's where you want to put your extractors. Um, for this uh, tutorial that I'm putting on YouTube, or someone will put on YouTube, uh, you can also make it smaller. And they'll show little white spots, and those will come directly up, and those will say, hey, there's these little white spots, and there's where you get the most materials and resources, and it's one of the best ways to do it. Uh, sorry, the heck guy had to leave. Um, uh, but I'm going to show something on my map here real quick for the YouTube, and I'm sorry that you guys can't see it, but it's my planets that I have. And there's a whole PI tab about getting resources and how much they extract. And I can't show it to you guys because you can't see my screen. You'll see it on YouTube. Um, and you'll have to move stuff every so often. You'll have to move your extractors so you can get to the wonderful little resources every so often. You'll have to build up... Um, and it'll be on the build tab. Your basic industry facilities. And if you keep doing this... This is the basic one that I have. You can, along with alts, go the, all the way up to, again, sorry guys, you can't see this, 
to where you can make P4. So R0 is your basic resources. P1, you just turn that R0 into a P1. P2 requires two P1s. P3 requires two P3s. And P4 requires at least three uh, P3s. So P4, three P3s, or more. It's It gets kind of wonky. They kind of mix in here and that, and they require different items. There's a whole bunch of schematics for it. There's pages on it. Um, you you will lose sleep, sleep over it, but it's a great way of making money, and uh, that's all I can say about that. Uh, doesn't work hard, too much effort. You can do it from light years away. Super simple. There's my money right there. Uh, wow. Yeah. So right here is I didn't collect my resource, my broadcast notes yesterday, and I have 45 of them right now at approximate uh, 93 million isk. So that's not bad for one day. And you can click the access resource or custom office and that's where everything goes. So you just click on that. Items are in the launch pads, items in this office. You gotta pay whatever tax rate is for each of them. This one has 2%, they may be more. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Nobody's really uh, too interested in it anyway. So questions about it, about planetary interaction? Yeah, that's well received. Okay, next one, exploration. I believe someone was interested in that, correct? Okay, exploration is a nice way of saying jumping through wormholes. There are no wormholes in this area, and I don't want to do anything that would get you guys blown up, but wormhole space is not null space. Nobody owns wormhole space. Furthermore, there are lots of dangers in wormhole space, so I want you to have a good idea of what you're going to do in there. You've got to make bookmarks of everything. I've had a guy that he went into wormhole space. He lost one of his core probes because he warped out and he didn't do the right thing, and he was stuck in there for a week before some NPC eventually killed him. But the wonderful thing about wormhole space is... You get to do the hacking mini games. You get to go find some really, really good mining opportunities inside there. Uh, there's a lot of combat that goes inside of Null Space um, and some very interesting NPCs. So uh, it's all about going around there, finding what's going on, seeing what uh, can go uh, inside the wormhole space, and just having a blast. I'd like to give you more inter uh, ideas about what's going on with them. Oh, did you guys warp in? Oh, good. Um, I'd like to give you guys more of a, a, an idea about it, but there's so many in there. Uh, I'll just give you just the three quick ones, which is hacking, which is you go to find a little spot that you can hack. You do the hacking minigame, and you get anywhere between scrap metal to or scrap resources to... Um, straight up really good equipment, blueprints, anything. Um, and if when you get good at exploration, you will be making a lot of isk. But it is also very high risk because there's lots of PvP inside of wormhole space. Um, that's why when a new wormhole opens up in our area, everyone's kept apprised of it. Everyone knows about it. It's like there's a wormhole opened up over here. We had, I think, a wormhole open up that was pretty darn close to a gate uh, uh, and it, it was scary because they could just pop in through that wormhole and you're on that gate about to jump through it and they're there to attack you. It was it was unnerving to say the least but it is something to look into. The EVE University has more information on it. We have it in our own wiki too uh, but it's just a great way of making money as long as you have the ship, the equipment, and the skills trained up for it. Uh, it's lots of fun. I enjoy the hacking mini game myself, so, you know, uh, to each their own. It's like running missions, uh, which is the next thing I need to talk to you about. Running missions, uh, if you open up on the side of your page here, I had it before, and I got rid of it because it was annoying. Uh, hold on one sec. It will be the agency, and it will tell you about missions. Um, the closest mission here, except for unless CCP is doing something special like they did with Christmas, I'm sorry, 
uh, the winter holidays, uh, is the closest place is, I think, 39 jumps away for missions. Um, that could be because of my poor standards and poor standings, uh, but it's generally, except for some of the epic missions and epic arcs, um, you can do them once, that's it. You do the epic arc, you gotta wait three to six months, and you can do it again. Or you just may never do it again. So missions are great for getting used to combat, going to places, jumping around, doing a lot of different things, but they do dry up, they do end, or you'll need to wait a bit, and uh, it, it, is a, it is kind of a bummer that they do end that way, but you get lots of equipment, and the wonderful thing about them is you do them, it gets you faction points, just like Factional Warfare does, and that's how you get uh, VNIs. You can only get those with loyalty points, and those loyalty points are like, they're, they're some of the best currency, other than ISK, that you can get, uh, and they get you all the sweet stuff. Oh, goodness. You guys have any questions about that? Alrighty. Okay. Uh, I will be talking about the last couple ones uh, that's on the wiki because I feel like I should go over them. Uh, scamming. You can scam anyone you want as long as they are not blue or green. That is to say they're not part of our alliance or a friend of the alliance. Do not scam them. Don't do it at all. Really, 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 really don't scam anyone from our alliance because that will get you booted out of the alliance and probably have a target on your back. You just don't want to scam anyone. If you want to scam someone uh, over in Jita, go for it. Go have fun. Uh, that's all up to you. Um, the only other thing to be, uh, I would say, to be careful about with your scams, don't try to impersonate the head of Brave. Don't do that. I want to do that. Uh, and don't do anything that's not classy, and that's part of the rules. So, you know, no racial slurs, no... None of that stuff that's going to get you in trouble like that. Just don't do it. <laughs> Stay classy. So you can scam people, you can do stuff like that, but... Um, yeah, you, you don't want to do that, because they can, they can just get on you for that. So be careful. What do you mean? What do you mean? What is scam? Scam is to uh, to defraud someone, to trick them into giving you money, uh, for instance, for a service that you didn't provide. So, for instance, uh, someone was asking earlier about how to bring their stuff that they had in another station in HiSec all the way down here to Brave Space in NullSec. And I could say, as a scammer, I'd say, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm the head of the, the department for this guy. So I work for... You know, Brave, I do all this stuff. All I need for you is uh, uh, just uh, uh, give me the money. I don't even need a contract. Just send me the money. It's only 100 million isk. It's super simple. And then I don't do the service. I don't do anything for you. Or I could say, hey, I've got an investment opportunity. Help me make this keep star. We're going to have this space here. It's going to be a huge corporation. And I take your money and run or a resource and run. That's scamming, and I'd say just probably don't do it because you're part of a corporation, and you don't want to say you're the head of Brave, because that'll get you kicked out. Of, that'll probably get you kicked out of Brave. Um, maybe, maybe they won't, but probably. Um, and it can put a target on your back, and it's just people are pretty wise to it now. Just don't do it to your fellow Alliance members and anyone that's green. No blues or greens. Don't do it to anyone who we're friendly with. That answer your question? Yeah, there's something that sounds very boring. What about the EP? Yeah, yeah. Hmm? <laughs> Sorry? What about, what about the EP? Ah, PvP. Uh, okay. Um, PvP is a wonderful way to make money. Is is that they have... Uh, they need to do it better. If you have your core taken care of so you can go through the wiki... Um, I'm going to scroll up here so that people know. Do, 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 do. Under Brave Military, they have a program that you sign in through that goes through the Kill Mail and the SRP, which is a Ship Replacement Program. And that is, if you're in a standing fleet, 
and you have the ship, the SRP on, and you're in one of the Doctrine ships, which is, you're in one of the ships they say you should fly. If I'm flying my drone boat that I have, my massive waste of space, they, they did not, and rightly so, they will not provide me the money to replace it. So say I was saving a Rorqual, which is, I think, what, like 7 billion isk, and I lost my 3 billion isk, or 3 million isk Atron. Yeah, they don't mind that. They'll say, oh, it's part of the thing there, and you talk to the guy who was running the fleet commander at the time, and you lost it defending the Rorqual, uh, Rork and you were part of it. So yeah, they'll pay for that. Or you were part of a offensive, it could be defensive or offensive fleet, and you took out some extra ships. Uh, they've got a program in there, and they will, once you go through kill mail, they will reward you money. They say, hey, you attacked this person, and he had a bounty, and so on and so forth. You get some of the money from that. So yeah, bounties are also really good, but people don't do them these days, but it's also another good way to make money. So if you're part of an offensive or defensive fleet, especially the standing fleet, you can get ship replacement, so even though you lose your ship, you can get you get the money to buy a new one. And furthermore, you get money for blowing up other people's ships. And it's also lots of fun. It's really, really lots of fun if you're into that sort of thing, and you have the skills for it. Uh, just be mindful. Um, the lower one, like I said, the Atron, about 3 million isk. The higher ones, or I will say medium tier, are like 50 million to 60 million isk, and three weeks worth of training and higher ones are like capital ships and that's <laughs> that's three or four months worth of uh, skill training at the very least and three or four months worth of isk that you had to have saved up until that point and that's a lot of work but you get to take part of some of the big straight uh, operations that go on there and you get to make a lot of money uh, let's see here any questions about that? Okay, I'm gonna wipe this over here to the Sino um, and keep going on here. Uh, begging, you can always beg for money. Go into Mumble, go down there and beg. Maybe they want you to sing I'm a little teapot, but I guarantee you begging, you can make money. Um, you can also trade uh, in-game and out-of-game goods. Say you're a good artist and someone wants you to, for instance, make a painting of their ship and their favorite skin with their background. They'll send you a screenshot, you do a painting of it, and who knows, Emma's paint. Make some money. It's a good way to make money. Um, we're over the Sino field right here. This is the little beacon right here in which you jump to and from places. Uh, again, I'm not so sure about this. Uh, freighting stuff to and from high sec down to here to brave it makes you lots of money uh, you just have to be very careful not to get blown up and they have people that do it as part of groups or as this ind single individuals themselves uh, or you can just do your own little company and start up um, but it's a great way to make money is doing the big shipping lane Sorry, I had to take a breath. Uh, any questions about the freighting? Uh, yep. Uh, what ship would you recommend us for hauling uh, our stuff? Uh, it all depends on what you're hauling. Uh, for instance, uh, if you wanted to use just a, one of the Galente simple industrial ones, that's a great little ship to start off with because they'll they are very specialized. This one only you know hauls ore. This one only hauls refined metals. This one only hauls planetary production goods like the Epithel, um, and that's super super great because I can get a whole bunch of them for a ship that only costs me like eight million isk or something like that. Equip it; it's twenty five million isk. But it, if I wanted to, you can open up your map or your ship tree, and let's see what it is here. It's the little, bi little menu button over to the right, the left hand side, it's got a, it looks like an A, but it's a pointer. And you can just go over to, for instance, if we go down to ore, the ore field, and that's their little industrial backbone of New Eden, blah, blah, blah. And they've got a freighter down here that moves stuff around there. And you can go over to, for instance, Calente. Oh my goodness. 
and they've got the obelisk, which is a simple freighter. And if I wanted the jump freighter, uh, the Anshar, I think they're by, yeah, yeah, the Anshar. And yeah, so the obelisk is 980 million, almost a billion isk. That's their estimated price. Who knows what the actual market is? And the jump freighter is 9.6 billion isk. <laughs> and it jumps around there, but it can carry a whole lot of stuff there. And it is a great reduction uh, uh, in travel time uh, and jump fatigue. So it's a huge investment up front uh, when you get into those uh, higher priced ones, but um, they they do make a lot of money. If you wanted to do even a simpler one, you can get the Orca, which is for, again, an OR, and that's in-system jumping, and they, you just get everyone to agree with you, you get a tab, you have a mining ledger that you can keep track of and send screenshots of, uh, and everyone just loads their ore onto you, and you just load it up and fly it down here and put it into the station and deliver it to them. They can sell it, or you can sell it and reprocess it as part of a group. And that's also another great way of making money. So shipping stuff around, moving stuff around, it's always needed. Logistics make the corporation run. It's a beautiful thing. Any questions more about that? Yeah, one, one more. Uh, what is jump fatigue? Um, yeah, I don't know if you were here before. Uh, jump fatigue is, there are two things that we use now, and I'm going to jump to the Ansplex gate. Don't worry, guys. We're, we're fine. Uh... Okay, so hey, Adrian, have a good one. I think I've actually run over my time, so that may be okay. No, I'm, I'm still fine. I, I've got I got minutes left. <laughs> so there's going to be 34 or 5 minutes. These are not 34 by this class, but it's okay. Yeah, have a good one, man. Uh, I'll jump you over to the Ansovex gate. This is a jump gate. Uh, An Ansovex gate is a nice way that you don't have to use the system gates you pay for the little bit of ozone that's your use. We we have a tax for the corporation now that they or the alliance now that they tax on everything. And you jump through it and now all of a sudden instead of making six jumps to sixty-eight foot tax six, uh, I just have this one. Super simple, super quick, it's wonderful. But when you use, for instance, the bigger ships like those freighters, or I think any other capital ship, you go through them or they have jump bridges and jump fatigue is just like this you can make that big jump light years away as long as you have a beacon and the ozone and so on and so forth there's there's a thing go for it and you're trained up in the skills and you've got the right ship and you've got the right equipment so on and so forth um, then you can jump and it's a lot safer than jumping through all those gates those system gates because you're not tied down to one location you're somewhere safe where no one can see you. Um, but, uh, on the other hand, uh, they do have a fatigue, and that means that after you use it for, we'll say something ridiculously small, five minutes for a small ship or something like that, it's gonna take you longer to make a gate. So it took me just pretty much instantaneously to make that jump, now I'll have to wait five seconds. Then I do another jump. Now it's gonna make it 10 or 15 seconds. Then do another jump and another jump, and I think it gets long enough to where it's like uh, 24 hours or something like that before you can do a jump. But it's, uh, no, okay, that's hyperbole, not that bad. But it makes it to where after you do so many jumps, you have to rest and you have to have downtime. And I think that's um, that's the game makers, that CCCP, uh, CCP, two Cs, one P, uh, that's the game maker, and they decided they needed to stop the moving of products so much, or at least limit it, uh, so that you know you have centralized markets and people can't jump from here to there to there to here, uh, and that's what jump fatigue is. It just makes it so that you can't pop around with a cyanocellular beacon from here to the end, other end of the universe, nonstop. It puts a limit on it. Did that answer your question? Yes, sir. Thank you. <sighs> All right, so can you drink a water here real quick? Hold on a sec. Um, and those are the ways in which you can make money outside of the station. 
mining, ratting, exploration, scamming and begging, you do it, stuff like that. Planetary interaction are the ways you handle everything outside of the, of the gate. And that's it. The sewer subways. If you were doing stuff that is inside of a station, I said gate, I meant station. If you're doing stuff inside of a station, these are the ways in which you can make money. One, trading. Buy low, sell high. Simple as that. Uh, there's a lot of Alliance members that they spend their entire time in Jita buying low, selling high, um, and that's what they do. Hey, glad I could help, Carl. Um, the next one, uh, as I said, uh, research, uh, which is part of manufacturing. Manufacturing is you get a blueprint, a blueprint original, so you can make an infinite number of copies. Um, or copy, which is provided free for a lot of items and ships and equipment that is provided to us uh, by the Alliance. Uh, and doing so uh, makes us uh, able to produce our own ships, our own equipment. All you need is the refined materials and you're good. That's simple manufacturing. Uh, research, which is another thing. That makes you that tech two level equipment. So if you go, uh, just for fun, we'll go over to the ship tree. Go over to the Galente and we provide free ships and our free ship is the Vexer. But if you want uh, the next level up, which is the Vexer Navy issue, that has to be bought with loyalty points and that's a faction. But if I wanted to buy something that was the Tech 2, that's the Ishtar. That's also a really good ship. And that also consists of lots and lots of good stuff. Or I could use the Proteus, which is the Tech 3. And that's a very, very powerful ship. And very, very expensive one. And to get those, you have to do research on blueprint copies, which is a copy of a blueprint original, which is in the production. It's, it's a lot of sitting in a station making money. Um, you, you, they're very good for all accounts which are trained up because you train up those skills. You can mass produce a lot of items for a really cheap price. And the facilities and ships we have also have great reductions, especially in GE. GE has some of the best stations for producing that stuff at such a low price. It's really not worth it to do it anywhere else in the Alliance. If you want it down, if you wanted an item down here, then just freight it down here and sell it for a higher price. <clears throat> the last one that I'll put down here is refining an invention. Invention has to do with discovering more items and research, and that's what we just talked about, actually. Um, that's the other word for it, research or invention. And the last one is refining. All that stuff that's mined down <clears throat> has to be taken to refinery stations. Those refinery stations have bonuses, such as ones in here in PCMA, but you can also, if you go over to your skill sheet, look up for processing. So for instance, if I want Arknor processing or Spud Knight or whatever it's called for that particular ore, then instead of me, when I reprocess an item, I for instance, get only 76, or know, it's not even 76, 67% of it back, I could get, you know, 90% of the item back, or even uh, 95 or something like that. And that's really good, because there's a lot of miners, but there's not as many people doing the re refining, which, given the fact that you only, it's done pretty much instantaneously, it kind of makes sense, but that's something that you can also make money with, so that they contract you, you accept it, you refine it, you give them the raw materials back, you make some money. Um, and that is it. I cannot think of any more ways in which you can make money. Uh, did you guys have any questions left for me? Yeah, I have a question. I have a bounty on me and one million pieces. How do I get you? It, sorry, come again? There is a bounty set on my name. You, you were, I'm sorry, you were asking about how to do mining, like, again. Is it something wrong with my mic? <clears throat> uh, yeah, sorry, it's just not coming in as clear as possible. I'm going to turn up the volume. Also, I'm a little tired from doing this one after the other. That was my mistake. Say, say it again. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. 
if you click on my info on my character, you will see that I have bounty on me. How do I get rid of it? Oh, a bounty? Yeah, there is a bounty for my head. Someone will have to kill you. Not from, I don't think they allow it from the Alliance either. Someone will kill you and once you're dead, they, someone will collect on that bounty. That's essentially how you get rid of a bounty. Um, there's not really much about it. Um, I can't see because I don't have your window open. Uh, how big's the bounty? One million. That's nothing. That's no. No. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine. As I said, it's like even the lowest end, people are making five million isk an hour, even for some of the lowest ships. Yeah, no, trust me, you're you're fine. That's no one's gonna go out of their way to, to hunt you down. Um, you can look up on here and they'll have on here for some of the highest bounties, and there's bounties for oh, billions and hundreds of billions of isk, such that for characters that they don't even come out. I'm sure that they've left the game probably. Um, but yeah, that's the only way is to get rid of a bounty is you get killed by a hostile entity. And that's actually one of the ways in which you make money with PvP is if someone makes you mad and you don't like them enough, you can put a bounty on them and then if somebody kills them, you, they get paid out that bounty. But to get it rid of you, you can't. Once you issue that bounty, that money's gone and you're to be hunted for all of time. As far as I know. All right, sounds cool. Thanks. Alrighty. Uh, anybody else? Any other questions? Alrighty. With that, I'm gonna end the recording, and uh, I'll just take your any other questions you have, literally about the rest of the game. If I can answer them, I'll try to.